This is a continuation of my series on electrical magnetism. In this video, I will be looking at magnetic hysteresis. You can find this topic in my course entitled Electrical Three-Phase Power Transformer Fundamentals. You can access this and my other courses in my stand store at this web address. Anchor has just released a peek at their most advanced multi-device fast charging lineup in order to take advantage of a $35 off promo simply go to this web address and take advantage of this offer. Another quirk to confound our analysis of magnetic flux versus force is the phenomenon of magnetic hysteresis. As a general term, hysteresis means a lag between the input and the output in a system upon a change of directions, much the same as what you might have experienced in an old car whose steering is very, very sloppy, and as you steer, you have to oversteer in order to bring it back in the other direction and once going in one direction. In a magnetic system, hysteresis is seen in a, in a ferromagnetic material that tends to stay magnetized after an applied field force has been removed if the force is, and if the force is re in the reverse direction. So let's see how that works. Let's use the same graph again, only extending the axis in the negative direction. First, we'll apply an increasing field force, current through the coils of our electromagnet, we should see the flux density increase, go up and to the right according to the normal magnetization curve. Next, we'll stop the current going through the coil of the uh, electromagnet and see what happens to the flux, leaving the first curve still on the graph. Due to the relativity of the material, we still have a magnetic flux with no applied force, no current through the coil. Our electromagnet uh, magnetic core is actual, actually become a permanent magnet at this point. Now we will slowly apply the same amount of magnetic field force in the opposite direction. The flux diversity has now reached a point equivalent to what it was in the full positive value of field intensity, except it's in the negative direction or in the opposite direction. Let's stop the current going through the coil again and see how much flux remains. Once again, due to the nature of the relativity of the material, it will hold a magnetic flux with no power applied to the coil, except this time it's in a direction opposite to that of the last time when we stop the current. If we reapply power in the positive direction again, we should see the flux density reach its prior peak in the upper right hand corner of the graph again. This S shaped curve traced by these steps form what is called the hysteresis curve of a ferromagnetic material for a given set of field in intensity extremes. This video is part of my electrical technical information series. Be sure and stay tuned as I will also from time to time be reviewing electrical products that in my opinion are worthy of paying attention to. This address will give you access to the supplier of aforementioned products and is also the connection to obtain a free copy of my 50-page electrical power crib sheets.